All right, how is everyone doing? I'm Rich Chalenza. Thanks for checking out the Rich Chalenza Show. WTF are you talking about? So what I want to get into today is, um, I guess you could say it's New Year's resolutions, even though I don't believe in New Year's resolutions. And I keep hearing it more and more, and I keep seeing it more and more online. And I'm not saying I'm against them. I just think people that set them, for the most part, are full of shit along with people who are constantly telling us a lot of their things on social media, which I think is wonderful as far as them sharing it with us. But then as you could tell, as time goes on, they start to look like idiots because they kind of revert back. And it's kind of funny, which I I don't want to judge anybody in the form of, you know, we all make changes and mistakes or whatever, but to sit there and preach a certain thing that you're going to become or all these things you're going to start doing and all these changes you're going to make when in reality, in the back of your head, you know you're not. And sometimes I think people think I created my podcast to tell people what to do, how to think, or any of these things, which I actually quite the opposite. I want to help people. There's no question uh, about it. And I'm going to eventually start, I've said this for the last month or two, uh, start interviewing people and getting a lot of different perspectives on my podcast. I'm just trying to get my, um, I guess you could say, wings underneath me to learn how to kind of speak fluently which I think I'm getting there. I just have to start also scheduling the time and getting the proper equipment to do this. I wanted to start doing my podcast where I was recording people on their phones more than anything, but it just, I'm not saying the technology isn't there necessarily. I can, I think, make it work a little on my end as far as audio goes, but it seems like when I'm talking to others, either their phones or their locations, we always seem to have audio issues. Uh, I don't think they take it as serious uh, Unless they're professionals, those people take everything serious. But uh, to get good recordings, I've done podcasts as well. Skype seems to work really well, but most people don't know how to use Skype. That I want to, do. and the ones that do know how to use it, I just don't like doing Skype necessarily. I travel so much myself. I got to do it where I'm kind of on the fly. So to do Skype, a lot of times you just got to be in the hotel, set a certain. Um, it's just something I haven't done, to be honest with you. I'm just not huge into Skype. I'm okay with it regarding business. But that's not what I wanted to do regarding my podcast. I kind of wanted to catch people off guard a little bit, set times to talk up, and kind of get more of a not-so-structured where you're sitting in front of a laptop, say, or standing there um, in that type of form. And you could do it on your phone, obviously, Skype as well. But I really want to start getting a lot of funny family members, friends, colleagues, and stuff like that. And um, I just wanted a different atmosphere when I was, I guess you could say, recording my podcast. Uh, And it always comes down to some audio issues because we just don't seem to get the right audio. And I like getting people in their atmospheres. But nonetheless, let me get back to what I was saying regarding New Year's resolutions. And here's the thing that I think more than anything that people are missing out on is they try to take on too many things at once and they become overwhelmed and they kind of lie to themselves or they think that they have to wrap up this complete package to become something that they want to become or want to, uh, I guess, accomplish is what I should say. And I'm here to tell you you don't have to do that. I mean, really, you do not have to do that. And I know a lot of people say, for instance, we'll just start off, most people want to start getting more fit after the new year, getting in better shape. So what they start saying is, I'm going to start eating better. I'm going to go to, I'm going to, go to bed earlier. I'm going to work out more. I'm going to stop drinking. I'm going to stop doing this. I'm going to start doing that. You're full of shit. Just pick one thing at the beginning, I tell people, to get something accomplished. And a lot of people ask me all the time, how do you accomplish what you accomplish? Um, And believe me, I call myself the sloth or the turtle because I am by no means the quickest to do anything. I'm really slow, but I never usually stop going after what I want to complete regardless how long it takes me to get there, kind of, if that makes sense. And I also, sometimes I do take on a lot of different projects. I'm not going to say I don't. And I think that's a fault of mine because that ADD thing starts coming out. But for me, I'm so... I am so um, obsessed with creating at times, and I see that along with my father. <clears throat> and I need to step back because I want from one thing to flow into another and to another. Even when I was writing screenplays, I'm writing, you know, uh, a thriller along with a mockumentary, along with a horror film, along with, uh, you know, a comedy. I needed those outlets because that was kind of what was going on. I get kind of stuck with just one 
It doesn't stimulate me to move on to the other, if that makes sense, because I'm kind of floating ideas back and forth. That's just what works for me. But a lot of times I'd watch, like, say, Orange County Chopper or some of these guys creating, say, a certain motorcycle and focusing in on that. And they would have, you know, a team would come together just to create that. It wasn't like they were doing an assembly line. And I found myself doing these things where they were an assembly line of creations. And sometimes it needs that focus where... It just needs that one-on-one attention for a while. And I just kind of went through this and I, with an app I was creating. I, I'm working on it. I haven't completed it again. It was called the You Around app. It's an app to help anyone in a time of need. And I said, you know what? I'm just going to focus this year on the app. And then I was focusing in on it. I had some problems with the app developer trying to steal it from me at first, then trying to sell it behind my back and all these different things. So I had to go with another app developer. I'm going to tell you something. If you want to create an app, it is not easy. It is not cheap. And it is a lot more complicated than you think it would be. Unless maybe you're a programmer. I'm not. Because you're kind of putting a lot of your trust and your creativity in, into them creating this for you. Very similar to if I'm a filmmaker, if I'm a producer, you're giving the range to a director for the most part to create a vision, Right. So that's kind of what I went through with this app. And I said, I'm just going to focus the whole year. And I did. <clears throat> By the second year go around, I honestly wanted to kill myself. I was so exhausted from testing it, changing it, going back and forth. And when you start creating something like an app, there's all these difficulties you come across as far as you wanting to to do this and not being able to do that. And then how much money it's going to cost to do this, how much time it's going to do that. And all these things that I really underestimated as usual. But... To make a long story short, I'm pretty close to completing it. And I, I never quit on something. And that's, I think, a fault to mine to a certain degree. Is Sometimes I should just say, Rich, this is not working or it's not going the direction. Regardless, I won't stop till I get it completed, at least in my eyes. And I think I learned some lessons editing my first couple films, especially my first one compared to my second because it never ended. The editing room just made me crazy as many hours and months I spent in there. It's never right. And um, when I did my second film, I definitely didn't do that because I didn't want... I had, you know, obviously you learn a lot about budgeting within the studio and all in time and all these different things. Um, so I, with my projects, I incorporate that. I got to look at how to kind of... I wouldn't say delete things that aren't needed, that even though you may think, but you kill it. I think Scorsese had a famous saying, if you love it, that doesn't mean you can't kill it or you kill it when you're editing. Because there's so many things you love, but just because you love it doesn't mean it it, it can't go bye-bye, I guess you could say. So back to me um, with that app, I was going berserk. And I couldn't do it anymore. I was just at my wit's end. I had to do another project, which I went into my Mastering Self-Confidence program. A friend of mine came up with the idea. He actually came up with the name based off my book's Wingman. And he's like, Rich, you should do a program. You travel all the time. I know you're doing the app, but you know, do some other things as well. I can tell you're getting frustrated, which I was getting very frustrated. And I was frustrating other people because you got to ask them to also help test it. I just hit the wall with it. And I had to say, hey, Rich, I'm not quitting this. I'm moving on to something else right now. That doesn't mean I can't come back to it. And I know sometimes a lot of people say, well, then you never go back to it or or things of that nature. I'm pretty, I know I'll go back to it. But that was the one time I said, let me just focus in on one thing creativity wise. And it kind of, it didn't necessarily work out for me, but it really did. Because I think if I didn't really just focus in on that, I wouldn't have gotten as far as I did. And I wouldn't have learned as much or paid as much attention to that. So now I jumped into my program and then all of a sudden I decided to do, because everyone, we've discussed doing a YouTube channel that I'm doing now and a podcast. So now I'm doing the three things. Obviously, I'm not back to the one. But I think in my case, I'm pretty good at being able to balance these things. And back to people with New Year's resolution, resolutions or wanting those changes, really focus in on one thing. And what's going to happen a lot of times is once you kind of become successful, or not successful, you kind of float either way. So if you're successful at one thing, you just say, I want to start losing weight. Don't think you got to join a gym, even at the beginning. Don't think you got to run three miles a day. Don't think you have to go on this extreme diet. Don't think you have to, if you like having some drinks once in a while, I have to quit drinking. If it's beer, whatever. Just say, you know what? I want to lose some weight. I'm just going to back up on my portions and food. I'm going to start eating better times during the day. Maybe I'm just going to walk a little more. 
all these type of things and be honest with yourself. I tell people all the time, man, the trick to succeeding in anything, I think, regardless what it is, is kind of understanding your strengths and weaknesses. You probably heard that your whole life, but it's really to listen to yourself and say, you know what? I hate working out. You know, I I personally love it, but other people I know all the time are like, Rich, I go to the gym. I'm bored. It's redundant. It's like three hours out of my day. I'd rather do this or I'd rather do that. And I get it. Be honest again. That doesn't mean that you still don't want to lose weight or you, it doesn't mean that you, you shouldn't do anything physical is what I should say either. Try to incorporate some type of physical, um, you know, type of exercise or something into your body. Because I promise you, getting that your heartbeat up and getting that, you know, that blood flow going, and again, that doesn't mean you have to join a gym. You can, I always talk about it, you can hike, you could surf, you can go find whatever. You play basketball at your buddy's volleyball. You know, even if you're golfing, I know it sounds crazy. I have an uncles and a lot of family members that golf. He's strong as a bull and he golfs almost every day. And I know, and he eats a lot of Italian food like I do, and he's really. Um, fit. And I know it's because he always refuses to take the cart unless they force him to certain golf. You know, I used to live on a golf course that they forced you to because it's such long. The holes are so long. Um, the range or whatever you want to call it, the, uh, the golf, you know, from one place to another is just too many yards. And, um, you know, he walks it and that's a big form of his exercise, how he keeps his weight down. Cause he was very similar to me, you know, weight fluctuating, but back to people just really focusing on what you're really your your goal is if you think that sometimes going to a gym is going to make you I, I hear this all the time actually going to a gym is going to make me drink less because I'm going to get more physically fit and then that's going to make me want to drink less or I'm just going to feel better then I don't need to drink and all these weird things that I hear and I've seen over the years um, and that includes people who do drugs pills or anything well I'm going to stop doing that if I start doing this so I'm going to start doing that and see if that and it's kind of a weird dynamic and I think we all do certain things like that doesn't necessarily mean drugs or alcohol or any of that but like if I start doing this this bad thing I'll just weed it out if the first things you need to do is weed something out that's bad just start with that so if you really want to really start drinking less start just really drinking less and just backing up but again I I I teach this in my program actually just do it as slow as possible but just stay focused in on it if you think you're drinking too many beers per night Again, don't all of a sudden think after the new year, I'm going to quit drinking beer or, you know, I drink this many beers, I'm just going to drink one now with a meal or do this. Most likely you're going to revert back because you like it. You like what you're doing. If you didn't like what you're doing, you wouldn't do it. And if you're not liking what you're doing, because I have family members that smoke that say they hate smoking, but they'll st- they still smoke, you're kind of torturing yourself. Uh, you're doing something in your body and your mind that you hate doing. It's, it's almost like a form of mind rape, I guess you could say to a certain degree. Because you're letting something influence you mentally, even physically, taking over something. You have no courage or no balls to stand up for yourself to a certain degree. And that's the last thing you want. And again, just focusing on one or two things that are also simple, not very drastic, I think, if you're going to start making changes, say New Year's resolution. So I do a thing where if you really do want to quit smoking, if that's one of them, I tell people, do not go cold turkey and stop smoking. You can if you have the willpower. God bless you. I'm not saying if you want to do that, please do it. But a lot of people can't. I tell them the one, the one cigarette less per week rule. So if you smoke a pack, say, you know, every day, you just want to back up one cigarette for a week. And then the next week back up, you know, two cigarettes. So if you start off at 20, the next week you'd be at 19, the next week at 18. Try to just slowly lean yourself off. I think that works pretty well. And I also think sometimes taking something bad, a lot of times we need to replace it. We need to replace it with something good. And I know that sounds wacky. So I was smoking a lot of cigars at one time during when I was making one of my films I talk about. And I've always loved smoothies and health drinks. And I realized um, I have to kind of replace one thing with another. And that's kind of weird. I know a smoothie compared to a cigar. But the difference was I stopped smoking cigars, which I started to feel better, even though I always worked out. And I started to drink smoothies, which in turn kind of made me feel better. And I'm not saying you have to always make something bad to good, but I see a lot of people quit something. So you'll see people legitimately quit alcohol. I've known alcoholics and that never smoked. Well, they'll quit literally drinking and then take up smoking. Or I've seen people that quit drinking and take up gambling, hypothetically. Or I see people that have a lot of bad traits and keep taking on more of them. <laughs> 
and uh, or when they're backing off other ones, kind of dabble in other ones, and that can include drug use or alcohol, you know, because I think a lot of times, one is, um, I heard this study with things regarding orally, where say a cigarette, well, first it's an identity, I think. A lot of things we do is an identity and it patches us or, or teams us up with other people that have things that we like in common. So a lot of times people drink with other people that drink. People who eventually smoke, you know, they hang out with people that smoke a lot of times. That could be smoke breaks or whatever, and you build a camaraderie. And before you know it, if you want to quit smoking, you're like, oh my God, I kind of, I'm going to miss seeing this person. They smoke. Now what am I going to do while they're smoking? Then I'm going to want to smoke. Or what am I going to do? Just sit there. And a lot of things, that's alcohol. I think back to the oral thing, a lot of things they clean that hit your mouth, including sugar, it immediately like stimulates you. And it's a gratification. And before you know it, it doesn't necessarily even become that gratifying anymore. It just becomes habit forming. So you're not getting the same rush as you did, say, when you first started smoking cigarettes or started doing drugs. But I do know people, I'm not going to lie, that do drugs that have held their shit together that are very prosperous. They love weed. Some even do coke, you know, casually. Some do ecstasy, uh, even as they got older. And they held it together. And they like doing these things. I'm not here to judge them, but I'm kind of, it's very interesting how all of us, and I always talk about this, and none of us are the same person, obviously, and everything we do affects us differently. When I go to a gym, it'll never be the same way. I don't, it affects me differently than it affects you, not only because of the intensity, the genetics, how hard I'm hitting, how lazy I am that day, all these different things come into play. And I think when it comes to habits or breaking bad habits, you got to find your own way. You have got to find the way that works for you. Even me telling you my cigarette rule or replacing a smoothie with a cigar, which sounds crazy to you maybe, but or whatever. I found that worked for me. Now, nobody else I've ever heard the, the one cigarette rule, and I do that with weight too. You only lose one pound a week consistently. I never heard of that, and it worked for me. Gaining weight, I only tried to gain five pounds a year of muscle, not where a lot of guys were jumping on juice trying to gain 20, 30 pounds in a year. Again, I, over the years, was very stubborn and I was really in tune with my body and my mind. And I was a horrible student. And I think one of the reasons I wasn't a good student is because I was so obsessed with my surroundings and what I wanted to always accomplish. And me daydreaming and only being, I guess you can say, um, engulfed in my own world. That I really was almost like, I don't need to learn history hypothetically. I don't need to learn all these different things in math. It could be geometry or all different things that I'm like. It's not that I didn't think I may or may not use them, which a lot of people argue. I'll never use this shit. No, I was just thinking about making a movie or I was thinking about going to do this in Florida, maybe moving to California and then I would read comic books or do whatever I was doing. But back to, I'm going ADD on this damn podcast, but if you, again, look at what you want to accomplish in the new year or in the future, um, the less you take on, I think the more prosperous you're going to be and the more focused Like I said, as time goes on, you will relay one into another. So say again, you wanted to lose some weight. You don't have to join a gym or you don't have to do these things. And you start to see yourself losing weight by even backing up some of your portions maybe. Maybe drinking less if you want. Um, Maybe it's like I said, you go play basketball with your friends more. Then as time goes on, your friends may be like, hey, we work out, we do yoga hypothetically on weekends too or during the week. Would you like to do that? You try something there. You kind of float and keep your, I guess, being very open-minded to changing and seeing what changes are going to work instead of always either being redundant and doing the same thing over and over again, not getting the same results, which is what happens to most people, especially joining gyms. I think most people get a kick out of joining a gym and saying they're going to the gym. And at the beginning, you can always tell in the gyms, I always said January and February are brutal. The place is packed. You can't get on any equipment. By uh, spring break, roughly, everybody thinks they're in shape, especially places like Florida, where I live. But everybody gets in close to the shape they want, or they think they're in better shape. They start going to the beach, and in the summer, they kind of hang on to the gym a little bit, and then it just weeds right out. You can just see it after spring break. Kind of through summer, they're fighting through it because they still want a summer body. Uh, But usually spring break, they hit it. They start partying again on the beaches, and they don't have as much time for the gym, which is fine. That's what life's about. You can do whatever you want to do. But um, again... When you're doing these things, just try to be consistent too, I tell people. So if you're January, February, March or whatever, if you're hitting the gym, trying to get in shape, all these things, great. Um, But be realistic too to say, hey, 
during spring break, I like to, or in the summers, I'm not going to be in this gym that often. I'm going to be at the beach more. I'm going to be doing this. I like to fish. I like to go surf. I like to do this or that. Don't give up everything, kind of. And, and I see that's what a lot of people do. Like they'll just start taking off weeks. At, they'll, they'll be consistent for a few months on their goals and everything with working out or whatever it is. It could be even starting a new job or anything. So don't think it's just fitness, what I'm talking about. I'm just using it for an example. And then as time goes on, they just start to, it gets weaker and weaker and weaker. Just understand like, hey, maybe in the winter months, I'm going to work out three or four times a week. But in the summer, I'm only going to do two times. But then after summer ends, maybe I'm going to jump back in there to three times, right? Just be honest again with yourself. And don't let that shit that, don't worry about what you're not doing all the time. Just worry about that you know there's another day that you can go out and do it, if that makes sense. So consistency, I think, is the key. Again, you don't have to overwhelm yourself, again, with tons of different things. And again, you may be working out at a gym for a few months or doing something for a few months, and you don't like it. Don't think you're quitting either. You may be like, gyms aren't for me. Yoga, I'm going to try yoga. Okay, forget yoga. I'm going to try hiking. You know what? I don't like hiking either. You may seriously be like, you know what? Fitness sucks. I tell people a lot of times, a lot of people don't like to sweat. I got a daughter like that. A lot of people don't like to work out. A lot of people like to hibernate. A lot of people don't even like to walk. I get it. But don't kill yourself over that. But if you are, again, hurting yourself, if you're gaining too much weight because you're extremely lazy, you have to come up with alternatives if you want to live long. If you don't want to live long, who gives a shit, right? I get it. Some people just would rather just sit around, drink, smoke, or do whatever they're doing. And I have family members and friends like that, and I don't judge them. I think a lot of them are happy just being who they are. They love going to bars. They love having a good time. Um, maybe that's just you. But um, one of the things, uh, I'm going to wrap this up actually, but one of the things I see more than ever now, I think because social media is such a big part of our life is if you see memories and all these things coming up is you see how people, a lot of times people are, um, I'm not saying that they're pretending to have the life they want to have because a lot of them are, and they're not as happy as they're making themselves seem. And, um, I think we all, to a certain degree have that online because we're kind of only posting things, great meals, fun places, weddings, travel, all these things. But a lot of people aren't as happy as they're proclaiming they are there. Because then when you talk to them personally, as you know, I'm sure you see this amongst your friends and family members and colleagues, all of a sudden they're posting, hey, I had a great time last, this weekend, went to, you know, uh, Palm Springs, Palm Desert, West Palm, did this, this, this. Then you're talking to them during the week and they're talking about, man, I, I'm broke or man, I can't, I'm getting thrown out of my house or man, my credit shit, all these different things is, you know, get your shit together to a certain degree where... Um, you, I, I saw that once in that, that what was it? In the, it was a military movie with the Navy SEALs, and I found it so interesting that before they went into battle, they all kind of came together, and one of them knew something was off with the other, with the team, and he said, what the fuck, you know, what's your problem? And then he described, I think it was, I don't know what it was, maybe a financial situation with his home or something. They all got together and said, we'll take care of that. But, you know, like as a group, as a team, which blew me away, but you know, a lot of times if you're at work or you have a group of friends and you know one's having problems, step in and try to help him, you know, as a team sometimes. And I'm not saying you financially have to pay his mortgage or anything like the Navy SEAL guys did. The Navy SEAL guys was interesting because he's like, we can't go into battle with anybody not being 100% with their mind clear going to do this because all our lives are, you know, in jeopardy. But if you have friends and things where you know you're kind of pretty, you're doing pretty well, and it could be fitness and it could be uh, financial or whatever, really reach out to them. And I think as a team, sometimes with your friends, I'm not saying do an intervention, but what I am saying is kind of maybe step in there and say, hey, um, what are you having a problem with? You know, and I go through this with fitness. A lot of my friends are older. They don't want to work out or they're like, Rich, I, wanna, I don't want to go to the gym like you or you know, this, I don't, you know, I don't want to do that. I just want to go with my kids. I do a lot of baseball or they're in volleyball and I don't have time, nor do I want time. And you try to talk to them and say, Hey, let's see what really, what, what I've gone through and what I can help you with. Maybe just your time, your, your schedule's bad, or maybe we could find something even to do together. Like if you want to go, if you still like basketball or you want to go golfing once in a while, maybe go with them um, or whatever the case may be. And I think on the other side of things, you know people that want to get things accomplished for New Year's resolutions, but kind of everybody just sits back and says, yeah, go do them. Who gives a shit? Yeah, that's your thing. Or you think your friends or colleagues or family members are like, yeah, they're going to quit anyways. Give them some support. We all could use some support. 
And most likely a lot of people are going to quit. We all know that statistically, what did they say in the first 30, 60 days? I think like, I don't know the number. It's pretty high that most people pull out of their New Year's resolutions and revert right back. But maybe all they needed was a little kick in the ass or some more support. So I just thought I'd bring that into play. So I'm going to wrap it up there. Um, Thanks for giving a listen to my show, The Rich Salenza Show, WTF Are You Talking About? And um, you get a chance, you can check me out on Twitter. I got a LinkedIn account. Um, I have a program, uh, Mastering Self-Confidence. It's to help men find the woman or women of their dreams, even if they've been through a bad breakup or divorce. And uh, I got this podcast that you're listening to, hopefully. All right, take care, and I wish you nothing but the best.